You are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, and welcome to a fireside chat. I'm your host, Lance White. Before I introduce tonight's guest, I have an exciting announcement. My book, Tales of a Zany Mystic, is now available for purchase on Kindle at Amazon Books. As some of you know, I live on disability. Over the last six years, I've covered all the costs of producing this show. Now, I'm asking for your support in order to keep my show going into 2013. You can purchase a paperback or Kindle version of my book through Amazon Books, make a donation, or sponsor my show, which requires $50 a week to produce. Sponsors will be acknowledged for the show sponsored and may cover any period up to several months and will get a signed copy to say thank you. If you are a regular listener who enjoys this show, who uses Kindle? Please support my work by purchasing a copy of Tales of a Zany Mystic for $2.99 at Amazon Books. To find out more about donations, sponsorship, or getting a signed copy, write me directly at zanymystic 59 at yahoo.com, and thank you. Tonight, my guest is Sterling Allen. Sterling is the CEO of Pure Energy Systems Network, the premier news, directory, and networking service, whose mission it is to find and facilitate the best exotic free energy technologies. It is aided by the New Energy Congress, which Alan founded in 2005. It is an association of energy professionals from around the world who review the most promising claims to existing and up and coming breakthrough technologies uh, energy technologies that are clean, renewable, affordable, reliable, easy to implement, safe, and legitimate. His graduate studies in college were in bioelectric chemistry. I first heard about Sterling's research through my friend Enric Palmgren on Red Ice Radio. To learn more, go to uh, Sterling's website at www.pureenergysystems.com. So let's welcome him to the show now. Hi, Sterling. How are you? Hey, Lance. It's great to be on your show. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, um, at what point did you begin to discover that there is a growing discrepancy between privately held high-tech energy and what we've been accustomed to as the suppressed version? I would say, actually, before I even encountered the free energy field in general, I learned in other areas in my religio political studies that the best stuff is outside the box um, that mainstream is corrupt and is not giving you the best information and that the you you typically can find almost as a rule of thumb that the best information is going to come from alternative everything mm-hmm. and so i took my uh, that understanding with me when I started getting involved in free energy technology. And when I say free energy, I'm referring to energy sources that provide or that nature provides for us free for the taking. Solar is free, wind is free, geothermal is free. And, but I also knew that even in those arenas that the best solutions are going to come you know, from the garage tinker or somebody who comes mm-hmm. from outside the mainstream sources. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of used that as my um, watchword, so to speak, to keep my eye out for the fledgling inventor, the guy who is not getting support from any kind of mainstream source. That was the one that I thought was going to have the best answer. So if it doesn't make a college professor raise his eyebrow, I'm not interested. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, um, I have had many guests who have talked about uh, this uh, topic and some who are directly involved who say that the technology which exists in corporate and private hands rivals uh, the Star Trek films and has existed for over 60 years. So it looks like, um, it looks like you're bucking a system that 
uh, has managed to keep itself in place and uh, keep us linked to destructive energies which use up the resources. Um, what are some of the uh, areas that you're starting to look into as possibilities for uh, uh, widespread energy use? Well, I don't know if starting to look into is the right phrase. I've been at this for a decade. Okay. And I'm very well seasoned in the fields. All right. Uh, actually, there's many fields. There's as many exotic free energy fields as there are conventional. And they're very exciting. There's there's a lot of really uh, promising things that we can look to for solutions um, that are going to be giving us energy uh, in a matter of months as opposed to years. Mm-hmm. I wish I could say that you could go and get one of these now, that if you go to this website, you can pick one up. We're not right. there yet, but we're getting yeah. close. Yeah. Um, I have heard uh, for a while the Dr. Stephen Greer was talking about developing free energy. I don't know if you're familiar with his work. Yeah. But uh, many uh, private groups and even uh, large consortiums are working independently on uh, resolving this issue. And, of course, I would think that part of that has to uh, probably has to include some kind of interface with the existing uh, con- control structures uh, in order to ease into uh, easing us off of our addiction to gasoline and uh, dirty coal and uh, fracking and the, the destructive technologies that we, we become addicted to and think that that's all there is. Yeah, there are some good transitional technologies that help you get better gas mileage, help you use this more efficiently and that, etc. help you get solar, bring the solar price down. Indeed, there's a lot of those. But what I like to talk about and focus on mm. are the things that are really transformational. That, oh, good. Let's do it. Yeah, when they come along, you know, they're going to basically make the powers that be obsolete, make price Wonderful. very, you know, not only clean, but... Uh, cheaper than what you're paying from the grid. Right, right. Uh, is cold fusion on that list? It is. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, would you like to talk about some of these? Because I'm all for bringing it out right now, tonight. <laughs> let's, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Well, I run on our website what I call the top five exotic free energy technologies. And exotic meaning outside of the conventional. And... These are, you know, these, these are technologies that are getting closest to market. And number two in our top five is the cold fusion technology mm, by Mr. Good. Andrea Rossi. This calls it the ECAT for energy catalyzer. Mm. And when we say cold fusion, most people are trained to think, well, I thought cold fusion was bogus, junk science, nothing to it, Pons and Fleischmann basically made a big faux pas or they they made a a major miscalculation on how difficult it was. No one's ever been able to to replicate it and you'll never be able to make anything useful. That's all bogus and was basically drummed into us by the mainstream. They had everything to lose if cold fusion were real, which it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. And so we have in number two position, actually, a guy who's got a technology. He's been selling a one megawatt plant. Um, uh-huh. It's been up for sale for almost a year now. Wow. Um, and one of the first plants for the public is supposed to be available any week now in northern oh. Italy. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. And, well, of and course, they're these, having other troubles in Italy with... Uh, Various uh, banking conglomerates trying to buy up the country, and uh, so that there's a lot going on. But uh, this would certainly help to uh, help the uh, people who are uh, the ones who are doing the work and at the bottom of the kind of felt looked at that as the being at the bottom of the food chain, right? And so this technology is one that is actually when we say cold fusion. Uh, that actually may not be the appropriate description because fusion may not be what's going on. It may be trans, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? I'm a bit on a... Uh, anyway, um, he'll come to me in a second. Um, instead of what you have is hydrogen and nickel going to um, copper, the, but instead of the hydrogen and nickel combining to copper in a fusion reaction, what's probably going on is the hydrogen is going to deuterium as the primary reaction transformation, and then the nickel is on a more uh, much a very low secondary reaction going to copper um, mm. through several stages. Um, and giving off a lot of energy in the process. And usually when you have fusion, you have um, a, have to have very hot temperatures on the sun, for example. It's 100 million degrees Celsius, mm-hmm. whereas these reactions are taking place at 200, 400 degrees Celsius. Oh, okay. And, of course, hydrogen and copper are benign, non-radioactive substances mm-hmm. and or, or, uh, nickel I guess is a substrate that they have in this bottom line is that you have a clean technology I mean they, they've been producing they have kilowatt level energy being produced from these reactors which is very um, is a lot of energy now, uh, are, can, are we potentially looking at something that is the size of a bread box that could be inside one's house that will uh, completely run everything in, in, on your property? Or are, is this a larger device that would, say, run a, a few city blocks? Or how would that work initially? Eventually, yes, you could have something the size of a bread box or twice that size, maybe four times that size that would power your house. Uh. Now, when you get all the components necessary to power a house, it'd be probably more the size of a small desk. Um, you know, by the time you've got to convert that heat into some kind of uh, a turbine or a generator, mm-hmm. gen set, it's going to be fairly complicated. And it's uh, this is probably a tem- technology that to power your house electrically would you know, be three to four years away. Um, mm. There are other technologies that are going to be closer time-wise than that. Oh. The best, you know, since this is a heat technology, the first application is going to be to, you know, heat your water um, and for your heating of the home. That's going to be the most, the lowest hanging fruit for home power. But for something along the lines of a business, you know, it's going to be making more sense in the short term for, you know, a heat application. For example, something that's going to be heating an um, uh, uh, apartment complex would be a, mm. a low-hanging fruit. Mm, nice. And then, uh, so uh, at that point, uh, the complex wouldn't need to be on any kind of measurable grid. Is that right? Correct. Well, that's a, that's that's the direction I think we need to go in. <clears throat> Absolutely. So another uh, one that's in our top five that is yeah. really funky weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a motor generator self loop with usable energy left over. Huh. How does now, that this work? one. Anyone who's a scientist in the audience. Or anyone who hears this, you know, at first blush is going to go, now hold on a second, I thought that was impossible, not going to work. What you have is a small motor Uh that powers a generator, a larger generator. For example, a 1.5 kilowatt motor turns a 7.5 kilowatt generator, and the generator is able to loop back, keep the motor turning, with five and a half kilowatts of energy left over. Wow. And now we're going, hold on a second, hold on. That, that sounds like perpetual motion. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. actually what's going on is apparently the phase angle of the motors gets out of sync, gets some harmonics going on, pulls in energy oh. from the vacuum, huh. so that that's where the energy is coming from. It's not coming from that little 1.5 horsepower motor Right. There's something else going on. Right. 
And this has been demonstrated by a number of different groups. Huh. So that, for example, one guy um, in India showed me a video of this thing running, and they have uh, um, they they tested one for fifty hours, ran continuous, mm-hmm. so that once it was up to speed, you know, it takes a few seconds to get the thing running. Not a few seconds. Uh, in less than, a, I would say, a second, they get it up to speed, like, you know, when you turn the starter motor on an engine. Mm-hmm. And once it's up to speed, they can disengage the starter motor, and it's self, you know, looped. Nice. Everything after nice. that is basically free energy. And that thing ran for 50 hours before they had some problems. The belt started smoking because it wasn't properly engineered. So he's in process of engineering that and getting it, to go to market there in India. Good, wonderful. <laughs> the next day, I got an email from a guy who told me about a company in Spain that's got the same thing, and they're actually going to be focusing on the one megawatt size uh, techno control. Hmm. And there's a bunch of other companies. We've got them all listed on that page. Totally crazy, funky, weird. You never would think something like that would work. Uh, Not in your wildest imagination, yet it does. Oh, it's not that you can it. just slap any small motor and big generator together. There's some some tricks in in the whole thing and how to get that working right, but mm. that one is looking really good. And because it takes off-the-shelf components, just configured in a uh, particular way, mm. that looks really good, and that's why it's number three in our top five. Ah, number three. So now, uh, have we've talked about the what number five and number four, and number three, or did we go the other way? <laughs> we started at two, went to three. We can go to four if you want. All right, let's go to four. <laughs> okay, this is a company out of Ireland. Storn is the name of the company, and they came on the scenes about back in 2005, saying that they had come up with a free energy technology. That would change the world to answer the world's energy solutions. And got a bit of a black eye when they... Yeah, it, it's a fairly l- long, convoluted history of this company. Uh-huh. As they tried to come forward, this is actually a an established company that was selling uh, devices that were um, designed to help uh, in fraud, fraud prevention. As you walk into these um, ATMs and you put your card into the machine, mm-hmm. uh, the little tricksters would try and put card reading devices on those so that they could get the information off your card. Oh. And this company had a way to <clears throat> prevent that. Uh, some fairly tricky things that they did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, working with police and whatnot, very reputable company. And the problem is that these devices take a lot of energy. And so they were trying to come up with some other ways to power these things so you don't have to charge up the batteries every six hours, eight hours. It's a lot of work for those municipal uh, police departments. Right. So they wanted something with less uh, maintenance. And so they were tinkering around with stuff, came up with a over-unity system that looked really good. And so they made that announcement, a big splash, and one thing after another, it, it just basically it kind of fell flat on their face in their public PR things. So they kind of went quiet and came up with a solid state system that, um, so no, no moving parts. The problem they had was that it was producing a lot of heat. Mm. And finally they said, well, heat can be good. So they kind of went with the heat and came up with what's called HEPA heat. And this is a company where they basically want to go, you know, they they want to go big. And so they they went with a couple of the largest um, heat producing um, for culinary heat. Um, they went with a couple of big names. And they can't say who those are. But I did see the contract when I went to visit them a couple months ago over in Ireland. I, I saw the device, saw it running, worked great. 
and I saw the contracts. I mean, they're talking the two larger companies in the world in that sector for home heat. We're talking devices that would cost the same as the um, hot water heater it would replace, but would use one-fifth the amount of electricity to keep it running. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> That's the right direction to go in, in, in any case. Yeah, so they're going straight to the major leagues and getting these companies to bring these things to market, probably looking to 18 months because big ships don't move very fast. And right. <laughs> right. That's right. And, uh, of course, we know that there's a great deal of resistance to reducing profits of any company that you're, you know, in- interfering with, whether it's electricity, um, uh, any of these uh, technologies are going to reduce the income from some of these companies. So uh, it looks like, you know, there could be some backlash there. As you know, uh, many of the people who have come up with devices have either been uh, paid off, uh, murdered, or mysteriously disappeared in the past. So um, it has been a volatile uh industry for people to be involved with, especially when people have go, Eureka, I found it, and then you've you lost it. <laughs> so, Yeah, you get uh, plenty of that going on. You know, the cloak and dagger stuff is um, does still happen to a certain extent, mm-hmm. but in my opinion, I think we've got plenty of brave people who are willing to just go out there and do the right thing. We're not mm-hmm. afraid of that. So they basically, you know, the reason that the bully has power is because you're afraid of him. That's and if right. you have no power, he has no, no, um, I mean, if you have no fear, he has no power. Right. That's right. Absolutely right. And we have to be fearless because uh, we have to be able to stand up and move forward. We've been kept uh, on uh, low-tech uh, solutions for over 60 to 100 years. And technically, by now, we should have anti-grav and flying cars and, uh, you know, basically extremely low-cost energy devices and uh, and much more. And I, I just, I, I boggles the mind to think that we have brand-new cars coming out every year that continue to get 32, 33, 34 miles per gallon. Uh, there's no significant improvement Um one person posted a YouTube, a kid, did some research and found out that the Ford has a uh, truck that gets 75 miles per gallon in Europe, but it, they won't sell it here. So, uh, and one of the times when I was looking through this uh, uh, information, there were uh, tests done about 30 or 40 years ago on some cars, and they were able to get 100, 120 miles a gallon. So uh, those things just aren't... <laughs> They don't uh, show up uh, once, you know, maybe once, and you hear about them and it becomes like legend. But uh, uh, it's time for these things to move forward and for, for, for all of us to move forward and not be afraid about um, uh, moving into the present and the future. You know, there, it's just uh, something that is inevitable and it will have to happen, so... Well, what was yeah, the number? Even though these technologies that we're talking about, you know, the, the last three that we mentioned, mm-hmm. are not something you can really, you know, go out into your garage, you know, pull pull a few things together and make one of these things off the shelf. Right. There are some things which are very promising um, that could be of that ilk, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of different ways that people can get behind the emergence of free energy te- technologies because. The thing that's cool about these is that if you have a way to um, provide power cheaply, you now are no longer subject to the powers that be. You can basically stick it to the man and mm-hmm. say, sorry, not going to play your game anymore. You know, My car can drive as far as it wants without stopping mm-hmm. for fuel. My house is not dependent on the grid anymore. I can build a greenhouse and uh, make my own food, grow my own mm-hmm. food. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can basically come out from underneath their control. And 
I think it's very empowering when you get to that point. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to do things like that because with the enormous push to uh, uh, infect foods with uh, genetically modified organisms and vaccines, and uh, all of the uh, manipulation that's going on and the fluoride in the water. and I mean, it goes on and on and on. Or, or even uh, the Monsanto um, crops that might be next door blowing into your field, and then they sue you for using their crop. It's like, hello. Right. Well, that's a common <laughs> practice for those people. Yeah. Uh, you know, and once I've been looking at the videos about what happens to living organisms when they uh, eat GMO, and it's absolutely horrifying. Uh, and we don't even know what's in what GMO uh, is in our foods now. It's uh, it hasn't been required to be labeled. And of course, here in California, where I live, we have Proposition 37 on the ballot uh, for November, which uh, requires labeling of foods that have GMO. And of course, I am all for labeling uh, uh, so that we know and can make informed uh, choices rather than. Uh, be uh, basically be slaughtered by experiments gone awry. So um, that's something yeah. you know we're we're starting to look at taking our power back. But this is going to be a close call because uh, the degradation of the food supply and the water supply has been pretty substantial, and it has led to, led to some major illnesses. And of course, the pharmaceutical industries aren't complaining because they get to make money on. Uh, de- uh, destroyed immune systems, and uh, you know it's a cycle of repetition that needs to be broken so that we can have some kind of a quality of life and not be living in fear constantly. There's a really cool trend in gardening that you can get indoor um, growing scenarios where you can grow indoors as much uh, in one acre indoors, so to speak, just to use the analogy as you can grow 20 outside mm. because you can do um, you can have full spectrum lighting so you can imitate like three and a half growing days per day mm-hmm. then you can get um, some really good um, you know have fish um, so that you have um, a really good nutrients going into the food mm-hmm. um, and then you have um, you have shelves so you have multiple layers in one building, mm-hmm. so that you can do multiple tiers. You can get gang up on the efficiency that way, and so that you can have higher than organic quality food grown indoors, um, cheaper than what you can get from regular farms outdoors. Mm, that's wonderful. Um, do you and have all of that is, of course, you know, energy dependent. And so you can right. have a good clean energy source. You could basically. You know, establish one of these farm scenarios indoors at the point of use, so that you're not shipping your food. That's another efficiency factor. Exactly. Because you, yeah, yeah set it up locally. Yeah, I I have uh, about two or three acres, and I I do grow my own food, but it's not the most efficient technology. And uh, I'm going to be looking into methods that you're talking about uh, to see if I can't. Get on, get with some of these things that actually work, and try them, and see if I can uh, make it work for myself. So, um, is that something that you have? Do you have that information about the growing uh, stuff uh, on your site? A little bit. Um, unfortunately, the methodology that I was just describing is proprietary, um, but <laughs> certain portions yeah. of it are not, and okay. so. Just knowing that there's a solution there and starting to wrap your head around that is a huge, right. a right. huge thing in and of itself. Just start thinking yeah. and ask, asking the questions and putting the pieces together. You can, you know, in a year or two, you could be uh, pretty far down the road in the right direction. Oh, that would be wonderful, and and it would be fun. It's but you like a little research project. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well. Um, so we've gone through, I think we got to the number five was transmutation, uh, the fifth solution, uh, and then did we ever get to the number one solution? Nope, we haven't. I've been holding oh. out on you. Ah, 
Do you want to hold out a little longer, or shall we? <laughs> sure, let's hold out a little longer. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, number five, actually, we haven't gotten to yet, is another cold fusion technology. Oh, okay. A company called Deathcalion, which is a former um, licensee of number two, the ECAT. They had, fell, um, had their parting of ways uh, August of last year. Okay. And Deathcalion developed their a related technology using hydrogen and nickel and actually just barely released some very exciting data um, independently derived a uh, guy who works for NASA but not on behalf of NASA um, was actually his trip was paid by the um, I think it's called New Energy Foundation that puts out infinite Energy, infinite hyphen energy dot com is their website, which is one of the foremost journals on cold fusion. And mm-hmm. he independently verified um, the data was something to the effect that at least three times over unity, so they're producing three times more energy out than what it takes to get the reaction to go in the first place. Mm-hmm. And it was very controllable, so you can turn it on and off, um, up and down as required which is very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the report basically, you know, went along those lines and was just finally released. They took the data, like, back in, what was it, March of this year and finally were able to come out with this report. And so we've been waiting on pins and needles. And oh, so that's good. why they're back up into the top five. And this is, again, in the kilowatt level range. Okay. Using these very clean fuels, hydrogen and nickel, you're not going to be running out of those anytime soon. Um, nickel is one of the most common elements on the planet, and cheapest. Right. And fortunately, and hydrogen is everywhere. Yeah, and people aren't fighting over it like they are with gold and uh, right. silver and diamonds and uh, the rest of that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, whatever happened to solar energy? Now I know that the, the, as I understand it, the price has been kept uh, artificially high. That uh, the technology exists to, to bring the price down and make it affordable. They even have uh, solar, uh, you know, uh, solar devices you can literally paint on a surface and connect up. Uh, but there's been um, some kind of uh, bottleneck in developing this technology so that it could be mass-produced at a cost that we could all afford. Is that close to accurate, or is it just so expensive? Actually, not really. Um, Okay. Solar has come down. Some of the stuff you said, like being able to paint on, yeah, that technology is being developed. It's quite promising. Mm. Um, Solar has come down hugely in the last few years. Solar panels... Are, have never been cheaper. Um, and, and in a solar system for your home, that is not the expensive component. The expensive part is actually the racks are more expensive than the panels. Oh. And having them installed on your roof, is it costs more money than the panels themselves. Oh, I see. And then you've got your inverters to, to convert the DC into AC. You've got to have bat- a battery pack. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go to a grid tie system, you save a lot of money. But in my opinion, the whole, one of the primary reasons you get the panel is so that you're not dependent on the grid. Oh, right, right, right. But if you're uh, going to be using the grid as a battery system, you save a lot of energy uh, of, of money because you don't have to buy those expensive um, batteries, and then you have to get the inverters. And so, so if you can hook up to the grid, it, it's actually quite affordable nowadays. Mm. Um, but from a point of view of being independent, um, it's still quite expensive, but mm-hmm. it's cheaper than it used to be. And what I would recommend to anyone who wants to get independent from the grid is get those solar panels while they're super cheap, and you can mm-hmm. use them as a decoy for the really cool stuff that you have running in your house while everyone else's lights are off. Oh. They think, oh, they've got solar over there. I wish we had solar. 
<laughs> and they know it's quite complicated. They're not going to come rip the solar panels off your house. Cause right, right. You know, it's just... Well, uh, also, isn't there a uh, possibility with um, uh, solar flares that the electrical grid could go down? Uh, you know, it's it's a pretty old grid. And there, uh, you know, satellites get disturbed. The electrical grid starts to go down, and we're in a solar. Well, it's been awfully quiet recently, but we're in a solar flare max period, and that's something that shouldn't really affect solar panels, I would think, unless it just fries them. I don't know. Well, actually, there are some things that you need to do to make your system impervious to the same things that would take the grid down. Ah. Okay. Um, on a micro scale, the very same EMP that the solar distributes that, and that the solar flare causes the um, solar grid or the, the electrical grid to have problems can also affect um, a solar panel system as well. And I don't know the ins and the outs of that. It's not an area that I'm expert in, but I do know enough about EMP and how it affects electronics to know that you mm-hmm. do need to harden some things if you want your solar system to make through it through unscathed as well. Mm-hmm. And so make sure you look into those things and become schooled on that and that you're prepared in that way. Otherwise, your solar panels may not you know, give you any protection from that kind of a scenario. Mm-hmm. Yes, and even these weapons that they have, we just put a story in our news today about these EMP weapons that the military's got, that they can have basically a cruise missile that can put out, um, wipe out specific buildings and structures in a very targeted manner. Um, you need to be able to be hardened against that kind of stuff as well. So right. it's, it's not, you know, getting inter- energy independent um, is going to, take some education on your part and some equipment. You might have to have some stuff in a Faraday cage that you can pull out after all said and done um, that will work when everything else has been fried. Wouldn't it just be easier if the major corporations that have the suppressed technology and are using it without our awareness just released it into the into the mainstream? Uh, it depends on what you're talking about. You know, there's some things that the black budget, um, black ops have had, um, you know, the things that are flying these UFO crafts around. Mm-hmm. If only we could have access to that, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, exactly. And they you have know, Stephen Greer's technology. been barking up that tree for a good decade and hasn't had a lot of success uh, getting yeah. them to... Uh, basically declassify and make those things available for general use. Um, I'm not holding my breath either, and there's enough promising things coming up from the lay sector that can provide us that kind of reliable energy that would not be as susceptible to the um, EMPs and other types Mm -hmm. of things, solar storms and other things that can make life miserable for the planet, Mm -hmm. there are some technologies that would be impervious to those types of things, but they're not available yet, but they will be, you know, not too long from now. Mm. Well. uh, And number one is one of them. (laughs) Oh, okay. Now we're at number one. (laughs) The mysterious number one, which is confidential and cannot be revealed. (laughs) Yeah, well, I can you... say some things about it, but I can't okay. say how it works. Okay, well, what can you tell us about it? It's a super simple, super cheap, super easy to build, um, and I'm just begging with the inventor to open source it. He is willing to open source under certain conditions, and one of the conditions is that we bring a couple of good licensees to the table, first, mm-hmm. and then we can open it up to crowdfunding to raise a minimal amount of money so that he can get a lab and not have to be farming out his um, prototyping where it takes five weeks for somebody to build something he can do in two or three days if he had a, the facilities. Mm-hmm. He's working out of a 
you know, kind of a, a small solarium and you know, he's got stuff in his bedroom and guest room type of situation, just not optimal for developing right. a product. Right, he needs a place where he can do this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes so sense. He, it's going to take a bit to jump through those two hoops. And we're, by the time we get a licensee to come to the table and put up quite a bit of money, um, they're going to have to have some pretty good evidence. And so by the time we hit up the public to raise up money to get his laboratory, just the strength that we've got a couple of licensees who have been happy with what they've seen and have put money on the table should be a pretty good incentive for people to say, yeah, I, I want to see this go open source. Mm-hmm. This is something that is one of those things that, first of all, the science will say, well, that's impossible, then they'll rack, hit themselves in the head for not thinking about it first. Like, oh, oh man, yeah. if only I thought of that one. Yeah, right, right, kind of like the pet rock or <laughs> 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 something Ruby really like that. Yeah, one of those things that really, you know, catches on, goes viral, everyone wants one. Right. Yeah. Well, we're about due for one of those. We're yeah. we're overdue. We're <laughs> overdue. <laughs> so, you know, we're we're ready and with uh with all of the uh communications devices in place, uh, you know, like Twitter and Facebook and all the other things that are being used to communicate, uh information can get out there pretty quickly. Yeah, I've been in, spent quite a bit of time with this inventor. He's over in the UK, and I can't tell you how it works, but I can tell you a couple of the results that we saw. Okay. Um, on one of the more um, advanced versions of this technology, he would not be open sourcing the um, advanced ones. He would only be open sourcing the simple concept. Okay. And in one of the more advanced iterations, um, he has these things that are called force multiplier units, and in a system with no force multiplier units um, hooked up to it, just the framework for it, so it's kind of the control, Mm -hmm. is driven by a motor to get the thing up and running, and then you have a generator that harnesses the energy that's um, made as a result of the spinning rotation. Mm. Um, With zero force multiplier units in it, it produced zero out because it didn't get the alternator or the generator up fast enough to produce any energy. And then with with two of his force multiplier systems in, the same motor turning it in the front, mm. it produced 1,250 watts, okay? Okay. And then with four of his force multiplier units on it, 2,000 watts on the output. Wow. Nice. So science would say it would go the other direction. If you're increasing um, the, you know, load or whatnot on the system, that it would you're reduce. adding weights and whatnot, your output's going to go down, not up. Right, and it's going up yeah. for whatever reason. Almost like double. First of all, it's going from 0 to 1,250. Well, that's pretty amazing. And then it goes from 1,250 to 2,000 when you have four of them on it. I wonder what would happen if you did 8 or 16. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's got some pretty st- cool stuff going on. This is something I witnessed personally, okay? Okay, good. All right. So yeah. this is this is not fairy tale land now. <laughs> yeah, I, I took videos of it. Those are, of course, confidential. Can't share those. But All right. I keep it's good in the stuff. Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that sounds really promising, too. And... Uh, what about, uh, now I have heard rumors that China is on the verge of coming out, literally coming out with uh, a kind of a black box device that has, uh, that is uh, a an almost free energy unit. Uh, that's a rumor that I've seen floating around. And what about Russia? Do you know anything? They do some wonderful research in Russia with uh, very... One of our top... Um is from Russia, a company called ACOIL, A-K-O-I-L. Okay. And uh, they claim to have um, some villa, or a villa in Europe that's running on their technology. 
oh. and that they're going to be making commercially available in 2013. Ah. You can't come to the table and talk to them or see their unit unless you have at least a million-dollar bank statement to, as evidence Ooh. that you're a serious player. Ouch. <laughs> and when I was in Europe uh, last month doing a kind of bouncing around, different, look, looking at different technologies, including the uh, one I just mentioned. Uh, I finally got a million-dollar bank statement, by the, but by the time I got it, he was already out of the country and couldn't um, accommodate me because uh, um, I was supposed to have that by Monday, and I didn't get it till Thursday, and it was too late. So I missed the window on that one. Now, but I do course, have a invitation to come in at a later date. Okay. Now, are some of these people uh, that are in that league uh, looking at uh, providing this kind of um, energy for the uh, for the elite or the super wealthy alone? You know, the, for them to develop because it seems like uh, with that kind of money that you're once again you're in the hands of large corporations that will patent it and take it and, uh, you know, dole it out and make modifications so that we can be monitored and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, used uh, to uh, get money from. I don't know of any of the exotic free energy technologies that are playing into the hands of the super elite. Every one okay. of them are mavericks. Um, and want to oh, see wonderful. It. Love Give it. power Good. to the people. <laughs> Great. You know, it's not that they're not going to patent route and all that because that's right, right, right. A fairly conventional way to go forward. Um, well, of course, and once most of these patent. are seeking patents and are yeah. um, actually on the road to getting patents. If not, they don't yeah. already have them. Andrew Rossi has an Italian patent for his cold fusion technology. Oh, good. And he uh, has applied for a U.S. patent that is in process that hasn't been awarded yet. It seems like something, some energy uh, 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 offshoots should have been produced or come out of the research at CERN. Uh, is that something? You know, they're they're doing a lot of work there with uh, the CERN Collider, the Hadron Collider. Isn't that something that would be a byproduct of all that research? I mean, it, uh, of course, that's being kept quiet. It's a privately funded group. Um, but now, it, CERN did did actually have a conference on cold fusion recently, about oh. six months ago. Um, they had a colloquium of some kind where they, you know, had different papers that were presented on cold fusion, which is one of the, I think, um, one of the things which could be pointed to is cold fusion not being junk science that an entity of that caliber would have a colloquium on cold fusion and, you know, be publishing papers, giving positive reports on cold fusion. So, yeah, that did take place. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Um, I don't know of anything that they're doing that is of the... Um, necessarily, you know, bringing forth something unique of their own Mm -hmm. that is of the energy generation capability. It's not really what CERN is about. Right, right. right. But and as to your earlier question about something coming out of China, mm -hmm. um, I don't know of anything. Chinese are really good at copying. They're not really good at inventing. Mm -hmm. So they're really good at pirating stuff and cutting good companies out of the loop. That's always possible. Making it cheap. <laughs> But they're not really that's, good at inventing stuff in the first place. I, none of, uh, I, I can't think of a single technology um, in our top five or runners up anywhere in in the horizon mm -hmm. that is, um, you know, original. Mm. I do well, know no, that I, they're very interested in these technologies. But I would not recommend it. any of the inventors who have good technologies go to the, the Chinese to help develop them. Okay. I did hear of an interesting story on the net about the, uh, there was kind of a plexiglass slash glass roof that was filled with algae, and the sun was used to grow the algae, and the algae produced electricity. 
as it was growing, it was uh, reproducing, and then there was a device which uh, could run it down into the house, and it would dry it out and and put it into food form. So you had heating, and you had electricity uh, to run your appliances, and you had food just from your roof and the the growth of uh, algae. Uh, algae bloom. So I don't know if that's anything that will show up in the near future, but it seems like anything's possible these days. Yeah, we actually sell um, plans on our website to be able to do stuff like that. Oh. It, it is not cheap, but right. it is possible. You can do stuff like that. And I would say that solar technology is probably cheaper than that. Mm-hmm. But if you want to get off the grid... Um, Mm -hmm. You can't. Algae is one of the players. Now, we didn't talk about wind. Now, uh, I heard in, you know, politicians are out there uh, stumping for, you know, their whatever it is that they stump for. And, uh, in fact, I didn't hear much much of of interest at all about uh, technologies beyond beyond, uh, you know, staying on oil, drilling for more oil, having more, you know, more oil platforms in the United States and having more offshore uh, drilling and uh, more pipelines and more fracking and clean coal. And I thought, you know, this is really interesting that in the age of high technology that the two major players uh, are, are just keeping us focused on things that are destructive and costly. And uh, although I did hear one person talk about the possibility of other technologies, so um, and I don't want to get into who said what. You, you guys can watch those yourself. But it seems like the discussion should be about what we're talking about and that people should be really thinking about these things and applying themselves to, uh, you know, what's around the band. I would think there would be some kind of excitement about this. Um, don't you? Yeah, wind, is- wind is kind of along the lines of solar Okay. Um, in terms of a price point. It is a feasible technology. You do need to have batteries or you need to have grid tie and use the grid as your battery system. Mm-hmm. And you need to have a pretty good wind um, profile if you're going to have wind be cost-effective. Mm-hmm. Um Usually people will put up a little meter, and or you can get information from a local uh, database about how well wind does in your area. Mm-hmm. If you do have a pretty good wind profile, then getting a, a wind generator for your home uh, can make a fairly good, um, you know, you're looking at a 25 to 20-year t- return on investment before, mm-hmm. you, before you start. Uh, uh, saving money. I would have had to start uh, 25 years ago. <laughs> be, uh, I won't need it anymore. I will be dust in the wind. <laughs> yeah. But what there about some Tesla? pretty good... Go ahead. What about Tesla technologies? Yeah, there's... Um, Nikola Tesla came up with some really cool stuff. Of course, uh, in terms of credibility, he is the bedrock of modern civilization, AC power came from him, radio, um, even some of the wireless stuff that's come along has been as a result of his work. Mm -hmm. That was the first half of his life. The second half of his life is stuff that we have yet to fully implement. He had ways of generating energy from the surroundings and Mm -hmm. providing it wirelessly and whatnot. Um, There are a lot of inventors who are working on his stuff who are actually getting close to having it be commercially ready. Mm. Um, And some of the stuff in our our top um, technologies and runners-up is actually a variation of Nikola Tesla technology. Oh, good. Um, So it's very exciting seeing his stuff getting close. Um, And so we can look for that technology to come and make, Finally, the, the stuff that he was working on the sep- second half of his life that he was kind of sequestered and, and uh, put in a, you know, made a pauper by the end of his life because the powers that be didn't want that stuff coming out. And he didn't make it into the history books like some of these others, Edison and whatnot. 
no, he was right. very marginalized in the textbooks, even though he's really the father of the 20th century in well, many right. regards. That's um, right. Um, and then uh, some of his uh, stuff has been uh, used for weaponry, I believe. Yeah. It's been, you know, in fact, we, it can be argued that the um, September 11th was a weaponized version of some of his technology. Well, you know, I uh, read uh, part of a book by Dr. Judy Wood that talks about the dustification that went on that day mm -hmm. and uh, the microwave technology that had to have existed for the for the metal to literally turn to dust. So uh, I, I'm certain that that was some kind of weapon. Uh, it's probably space-based and uh, cross-referencing the whole area. But uh, Yeah, I'm reading her book right now, finally. I'm on oh, about page oh, 30. It's like a textbook, and there's some really good information in there. My brother was telling me all about it last time we were together a few weeks ago and got me excited about that. Um, there really is some interesting stuff there. For example, um, blocks away from the towers, there were engine blocks that went to completely liquefied, uh -huh. and that the seat belts were not melted. Yeah, so figure. yeah. Yeah. There's something going on there that had nothing to do with heat and everything yeah. to do with the directed energy weapon. Yeah. And there were several yeah. engine blocks in a row that were just, like, melted. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The cars turned upside down, flipped upside down. Yeah. Um, for no other reason that, you know, there's there's no logical explanation from anything conventional that we know about. Really good information in that book that you just... It, it's... The reason people don't talk about this, and, and uh, it's it's one of those things that's so far outside of our realm of understanding that we don't know where to categorize it, so we just ignore it or gloss over it or, or don't talk about it because it's not politically correct to do so. But yeah, and there's yeah. definitely some stuff going on. And I sent her an email today. She's going to be speaking at this conference I'm at um, in Holland on the the 9th through 11th, um, the Breakthrough Energy Movement um, mm. Conference in Holland. And uh, so we've been chatting back and forth. And I said, you know, it seems to me that maybe what happened was that Building 7 was a staging area for the directed energy weapons, and it was brought then brought down after Buildings 1 and 2 came down. It was brought down through more traditional uh, thermo thermitic types of explosions because mm. there was thermite, nanothermite found mm -hmm. in the wreckage. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Building 7 from the, the air, there was a big pile there um, that is consistent with the building coming down through a classical dem demolition type of um, method, which, mm -hmm. of course, all of that is inside, or if, if any of that's going on, then, then those buildings came down as an inside job, not through, you know, just... Uh, weakening through planes hitting a couple of buildings oh, absolutely. and then they pancake down. No way that happened. Absolutely. Because they came down at free fall speed or near free fall speed. Near free fall and turned to dust. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really important for people to keep an open mind when, when this subject comes up because it will come out and it has to come out. In fact, I asked Dr. Wood if she'd be on my show, and we uh, we haven't finalized it yet, but I'm hoping that she will come on uh, because I like her work and what she says, and she's an extremely intelligent and and uh, explains things simply and practically, and, and it's fun to listen to her. Yeah. And she's done her homework. So uh, if you see her, tell her you're on my show and uh, let her know that I'm still interested, would you? <laughs> okay. Dr. Judy Wood. Yeah, that's good information. Yes, yes. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, but unfortunately, uh, we could go down that avenue, uh, but we, we're running out of time. So I want you to be able to uh, mention where we can, uh, you know, listeners can find your work. And Sure. Uh, the, best, yeah. the best domain name, um, easiest to remember, is freeenergynews.com. Okay. Um, that forwards to our Pez Wiki. Um, website, which is a news and directory site about these cutting edge. Um, I, I've, we really do have the best collection of, you know, exotic free energy technologies um, 
there's really nothing that comes really close to it of covering all things free energy. There are some excellent Cartesian things that do better than us on that particular genre, but that's one of many genres of free energy technologies that are coming to market. So it's mm-hmm. a really exciting time. I appreciate you letting me come on your show and talk about these technologies that can be empowering to the individuals uh, You know, as we bring these technologies out as the... Uh, mm-hmm. World powers of be are trying to collapse the economy of the world. These things can help us not collapse if we can get them out in time. And even Absolutely. knowing that they're on their way can make a huge difference in the yes. hope profile. Yes, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree with you more. So uh, thank you so much for being on and, and sharing your uh, inspiration with us because uh, we need to keep going in that direction. And uh, uh not let the, the powers that be, let, let's let them become the powers that were. <laughs> right. And we shall become the powers that are. And, uh, you know, we'll bring these things out and use them. And uh, I appreciate the work you do on this. And just want to really thank you for being on the show. And, and uh, you know, we can keep tabs on this now from your, through your site. You're certainly welcome. All right. Thanks again. And uh, good night, everybody.